Back for the Fall Cup 2023 Tier 2 Final, as we have two great teams, Kiss Menlaws against Dirty Birds, Jeff Roosevelt, Mo Kong here. Jeff, good evening to you. Uh, we got the so-called two best teams, the Birds against the in-laws. Uh, your early thoughts with these two teams going at today? Looking at the Dirty Birds roster, they honestly look to me like a Tier 1 team. Um, unbelievable athletes on that team, but I would be hard pressed to count out Iggy Magnets because he makes things happen for that Kiss My In Laws team. So I think it's going to be a great game, a lot of offense. Looking forward to see what happens. So when you say great game, do you think it's going to be a high scoring game? I do. I think it's going to be a very high scoring game. I think the offenses are are are, are, are tremendous, and um, I think it's going to be possible one of those situations where one stop. Uh, could cost the team the game. So Dirty Birds, you know them very well because those are guys you play with on your higher division teams. Quay Johnson is the quarterback coming in. He's been in fuego and how he's been locked in. Can he carry that momentum into this final? I think he can. I think he has the weapons around him. He's got chemistry with uh, with uh, guys like James Tyrell and James O'Han and uh, Khalil Kerr. So I think uh, this could be a big opportunity for Quay to get the W. And the unknown, Kiss My In-Laws. This is a team that has had quite the unknown in terms of the roster composition, no one knows. These aren't star dust names here. These are guys that fit well with Iggy Valdez Manzanello's roster, <laughs> how this goes for him. I think uh, one person on that team, Sanders Armand, someone to look out for, played with him. He's a beast. So uh, I would look out for the Iggy to Sanders combo for uh, a big spark for their offense. Well, a combo, too, will be the requirement to get the touchdowns in this game here. We think it could be a high-scoring game. We'll find out here as we get ready for kickoff between Dirty Birds and Kiss Menlaws as we go down to Fieldside for kickoff here. So here we are. It is now time for this game here in this matchup on this Saturday night. Jeff Rosenblatt, Mo Kahn. Uh, this could be a, a game with great sumptuous end product here as we get ready for this opening play and it appears that it will be Kiss Menlaws who will be on offense here. You talk about their attack, Iggy Valdez Manzanato 47 touchdowns, 6 INTs 74% passing rating and 1700 yards this season. I mean that's obviously those stats are tremendous uh, he has weapons around him, Vincent Benjamin uh, I'm looking to see uh, a few big plays from either Sanders or Vincent to, uh, to start the game. So we we'll get ready now for this first play of the day. And you talk about uh, Sanders Armand, who had 25 catches in the regular season. Vincent Benjamin had a fabulous year, 37 catches off of 48 targets. And we'll see if that top two punch will be the key. The X-Factor, Oriola Poirier, who came in for David DeAndrade. And now a drop ball by Benjamin, and that is a rare miscue for him. In on the coverage was Markins Valcor. Certainly a rare drop. Vincent Benjamin has uh, very sure hands. Um, big opportunity for the Dirty Birds, possibly on defense, to make an opening statement. We talk about this Dirty Birds defense and how they've been ferocious this year. As a whole, I believe they have almost 39 teams. So they do have the speed. Now in the pressure. Throwing, and that is caught by Noel, and that is tackled quickly by the Dirty Birds defense, this time by number 11 and Justin Blackie. Yeah, Justin Blackie, very underrated player, not so well known in FPF, but he's a great rusher, great defender, at, great, great at flagging. So uh, we'll see what type of impact he's going to have on this game. And this will be a third down and about four coming up for this in-laws attack. Benjamin's the second receiver to the right of the formation. You look at Santos Armand, he's a big target along with Poriola, oh, Poirier on the left side. Well, that's Mazzanato going middle, open, Benjamin, first down and more up ahead towards, and he is tackled by James O'Han along with Valcour, and they just opened him up with great ferocity. Not surprised to see Vincent Benjamin making a huge play on the opening drive. He is uh, probably their go-to guy in offense, and he just found that zone in the middle of the field, and uh, Iggy did a great job to put that ball right on him. Well, they were, a bit, they were guilty of ball watching Dirty Birds on that play, and now this is a first and goal from the five-and-a-half-yard line. A good-looking start here for 
Iggy Valdez, Mazzanello's offense, they're at the scene of the crime again in the neck of the woods where they, love, where they love to score points. And he will go with the trips right with Poirier, the third receiver to the right of the formation, Benjamin, the second receiver as well. Noel the snapper, and they shift over with O'Hain. So this could be a very tricky proposition here for the defense. Going middle, back oh. end zone, touchdown. Vince on Benjamin, and the eyes is what led them to the touchdown as we see off the replay coming up. Great pass by Iggy. Um, very impressed with his play calling, and again, not surprised to see Benjamin doing uh, big things. Let's take a look at the replay. And the replay was, uh, we'll get that replay corrected next time around here, but that is an early lead here. So the first marker laid down by the Kiss My In Laws attack, and this is a situation now for them. It's going to be a two point cover. This is what Iggy loves to do. He loves those two point attempts, and this could be a, a six, if not, eight nothing lead. Armand is dropping back with Noel as his third quarterback has time to work with. Noel looking for an option, rolling, gets by Valcour. He's taken off, and Dylan comes in for the tackle to prevent the two-point converts. Big tackle by their rusher, Naz Dylan. And uh, noticeable absence from the Dirty Birds tonight is uh, Quaid's sister and James Tyrell's wife, Kiana Johnson. So it looks like Khalil will be snapping for them which is uh, an interesting change to what they've been doing all yeah, season long. That's a downgrade at the snapper position. Agreed. Yeah. Huge downgrade. Kiana, we love you. We wish you were here. But Khalil will try to fill your shoes. We'll get the instant replay uh, situation corrected. So Khalil Kerr is in at snapper. Quay Johnson in at quarterback. 39 touchdowns, 6 INTs, a 65% passer. And that will move up by a percentage point or two. Dubois in on the tackle on Kerr. And you talk about Khalil Kerr at that position. I know Keanu Johnson has been the mainstay. But Khalil Kerr has that afterburner effect when the ball's in his hands. Khalil Kerr, Kerr is arguably the best snapper in FPF. He is unbelievably versatile. Uh, amazing speed, great hands, can run any route. So it's a big weapon that I think uh, Quaid is going to be using on offense all night. And speaking of big weapons here, you talk about James Tyrell, what he brings, 27 catches, 11 touchdowns. Johnson, middle, blocky, and that is caught and brought down by Julien Prou for about a four, if not five-yard gain on that play. Nice in route from Blackie. He's got good hands. Again, everyone on this offense is uh, – Pretty sure-handed. It's a, a high-octane offense. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them take a shot uh, this play or the next one. Well, it's their open possession here for the Dirty Birds. This is a team uh, that has done very well. They, of course, this is a team that beat this very in-loss team in the early rounds of the knockout stage. So they do have that edge over them. Johnson, quick fire. Tyrell on the sidelines. And the Great Cup champion got himself more than enough for a first down. Tackled by Vincent Benjamin. It looks like Sanders, who's playing the three right now, is uh, taking a few steps back as soon as the ball is snapped. It looks like he doesn't want to get beat. They have a lot of burners on the uh, on the Dirty Birds, so Sanders going to have to be careful and uh, be playing a really solid uh, safety position tonight. Seven-game streak of 30-plus points for the Dirty Birds, and they love to get open up their account. They're down by a score of 6 nothing. Quick fire, Kerr, and he is taken down by Craig Browning for maybe two, if not three yards. Right now, Qu Quaid looks very comfortable in the pocket. He's taking what the defense gives him, and they're uh, marching down the field with, uh, with ease right now. Showing the West Island trickery and magic, Quaid Johnson with his arm, of course, a former tackle player. He's caught a few balls from you in this league. He has. Amazing receiver, amazing quarterback. Quaid is, uh, Quaid is the man. And Johnson, one step pump, looking, waiting, patience, waiting over, and that is Ooh. caught by O'Han near sideline. Uh, what have you seen from his quarterback play right now from your viewpoint in the stands? I mean, very impressive. It looks like he's very calm in the pocket. He's not forcing anything right now. There it looked like he wanted to take a shot that wasn't there. So he uh, scoured the field, looked at his options, took, uh, hit a nice, uh, nice ball to James O'Han on the sidelines. And this will be a second and short coming up here for the Dirty Birds offense. In this first drive, they're down by six. Johnson going to the near side. That's called by Blackie, and he's tackled by Dubois, and that'll be more than enough of a first down inside the red zone. I mean, the Dirty Bird offense right now is 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 looks effortless. Very uh, very impressed with what I'm seeing with Dirty Birds right now. And this will be a first and goal, and now we have the uh, drone in play as well. Oh so, yes. So we got the drone. In Hello, play. drone. The drone will be our third analyst here. So. <clears throat> I like it. Here's Johnson looking to the right. Pumping. Sacked. Brought down 
rather quickly by Luca Kenville, who had seven sacks during the regular season. Kenville was a monster, underrated player for this in-laws attack. Very nice sack by Kenville there. But I don't mind the sack from uh, that Quay took. Don't force a ball. Don't throw a pick. Live to see another down. But, again, uh, great rush by Kenville and a nice flag for the sack. And this will bring up a second down, and this is a loss of about four. So they're now outside the 10, still second and goal for the Dirty Birds. In this first possession of them, they were about 14.40 left in this first half. Jeff Rosenblatt, Mo Khan on the Saturday night. Base formation for Johnson. Pressure from Canville. Looking sacked back-to-back -back times as a chief destroyer. Luca Canville came in breathing heavy, and he got himself a sack out of that play. I mean, great defense by Kiss My In-Laws. It looked like nothing was open uh, for Quaid there, or he couldn't see anything that was open. And um, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing with this, uh, what was red zone defense for Kiss My In-Laws. So the Fitbit is uh, very active, but they're going in the wrong direction now. It just becomes third and from the Champlain Bridge. This is going to be very difficult to get in the end zone. But when they need a play, look for James Tyrell, possibly on a big in or a jump ball to him. Do you cut this field in half? And here is Johnson. Look at the cut in half. Going towards that area. Oh my God. And Tyrell took his eyes off the ball, caught in two minds, looking for the touchdown. I just see if the replay will get that correct as soon. That is something you literally never see, which is James Tyrell drop a ball. But it looks like on the replay here that maybe he just took his eye off the ball a little bit. Yeah, he was caught in two minds. That was a great throw by Quaid. Possibly a little bit behind him. But again, obviously James Tyrell is the type of player that is normally going to catch that ball. And with that, it will be a fourth and goal from near midfield. And for James Tyrell, could his number be called? Khalil Kerr out there as well. And here is Johnson. They're down by six. He's going crossbody. That is dropped by Khalil Clear. Second consecutive drop on this drive. And because of that, it is going to be a turnover on downs. And this offense for Kiss Menlaws will have fabulous real estate to work with. Even though that was a drop from Khalil, I don't think he would have scored anyways. It obviously would have flipped the field position a little bit more, but very, very impressive defense from Kiss My In-Laws on that first drive. And impressive indeed, and uh, this is now a chance for them to stretch out this lead of six and looking to really bite the Dirty Birds' wings on this drive coming up here. Iggy Valdez Manzanato has a base formation. Poriola, Oriola Poirier, I beg your pardon, is the wide out to the left of the formation. Looking towards the right, pumping, short, Noel caught, and he is tackled by diving James O'Han for a second down coming up. I'm looking at Alex Noel as someone that could be a big impact player in this game. We're going to see if Iggy likes to use his snapper, especially in a championship game where there's a little bit more pressure. Take that safe play and uh, march down the field that way. Well, right now it's, it's just body blows in this early going of this boxing match here. You want to just lay out those body blows for the knockout punch. So Bounty and Benjamin will be on the right. They'll keep Noel at the snapper roll. Armand we've not really mentioned yet, and we'll see if his number will be dialed up on this play by Valdez Manzanato. Double snap, double hut. Now looking towards Armand, and that is deflected away by Blackie. Also in was Valcor in on the coverage. So a bit of a, of a roll of the dice, and luckily for Iga, came up empty on that play. Yeah, we had Sanders running a skinny post. He would look like the, it was sort of throwing it into double coverage, uh, but obviously Sanders is a big body, and if Iggy throws it up, maybe he's throwing it where only Sanders can get it, but that was a bit of a bit of a, uh, a gamble on that throw. Lucky from a perspective that wasn't picked off. Exactly. Because of the bracket coverage that exactly. was. Exactly. Second down and four coming up. Your trips left for Kiss My In-Laws. Grounding the solar shoot to the right. Valdez Manzano looking, pressure on, that is caught by Poirier. And here he comes with the afterburners on, the Concordia Stinger buzzing his way through, tackled by James O'Hain, a former Concordia Stinger, as they're now inside the red zone. He really turned on the afterburners after he caught that, after he caught that ball. We see the throw here by Iggy, and then just taking off getting by James Tyrell. Uh, that's Oriola Poirier with a serious play right there. I wonder if he might be on your radar. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything, but yes, he most certainly is on my radar right now. <laughs> we don't want to tamper here, you know. I'm know. more of a GM than a quarterback, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> that's how I like to. Oriel like Poirier. Oriel Poirier. He's in the notebook right now. Yeah, no question about that. Six nothing lead for Kiss My In Laws. 
knocking the door, trying to kick down this door. Valdez Manzano back end zone. Benjamin, touchdown. Yep. Yep. Will they challenge it? Uh, two feet were in. It appears both well, they might challenge it here. And you saw James O'Hane trying to see it. Now from the replay, we'll see how. Let's this check the out. replay. But from from the from the bird's eye view here, it looked like he got two feet in. Let's take a look. One and oh, look close Ooh. from here. Look close, but I think Let's he might have got the it. Sideline here. The left foot is the one in question. I think he got it. Yeah, I think, that, I think he got it. If, it was yeah. out, if that was a size 12, I think he's out of bounds. Yeah, but, but thank God he wears size 11 and a half, so we got it in there. Yeah, so with that, it's a 12 nothing lead, and now it's planning out the window for Dirty Birds on the plan B. And they have a trips right for Valdez Manzanato. Middle, back end zone. And Ooh. that time, part two came up empty on the Oscar award for Vincent Benjamin. And with that... A 12 nothing lead, and now if you're Quay Johnson, take us inside the mind of a quarterback. Do you change anything? You're down by two scores. I don't think you change anything. I think you try to try and stay poised, call your plays. You're down two scores, but in in in, in FPF right now with the onside kick, you're still in the game. So I would uh, just keep doing your thing. Ten minutes in left in this first half, and James O'Hane is the second receiver to the left. Johnson pumping pressure, Canville. And skying up there is O'Hane tackled by Poirier. And that'll be enough for a first down or close enough to a first down. And they will indeed move it up by yard. So 11-yard gain. Nice throw and catch by from Quay to James O'Hane. Uh, Sure-handed receiver. Uh, when he needs a play, that's a good guy to go to. Is he trusting his reads? Because he's doing a lot of pumping with his first read, second read. It looked like he was going. That was almost his third read, it looked like there. It looks like the first two reads were covered, which is uh, if you can get to your third read in FPF, that's impressive. Or it could be problems, too. Here's Kerr, little dance Ooh. move. Kerr, round two, round three, tackled by Benjamin, and this will be a first down. And this is a guy that could really be ruthless and clinical when the ball's in his hands. The guy is a game changer, unbelievably shifty with the ball in his hands. Uh, if you're the Kiss My In-Laws uh, defense, you got to have a very, pay, very special attention to him. And that is going to be what we're going to see. Again, there's permanent class across the receiving core for Dirty Birds and how they want to go. They're down by a score of 12 nothing in this first half. And for Quay Johnson, trying to keep the momentum going and flowing as they have had that since midway through the Fall Cup back in early October. Johnson, back end zone. Kerr's got six, and it's a 12-6 lead with 7.32 left. Nice play call there. Khalil wide open in the back of the end zone. Uh, I think converts might end up being a big thing in this game, so let's see uh, if the Dirty Birds are going for one or two. And uh, you can see from the replay how that played out for the Dirty Birds. Uh, Johnson calm, cool, and collected on that throw. And, again, you mentioned Luca Canville. That pass rush is getting closer and closer. He already has a couple of sacks, but I wonder if that's playing in the mind of Quay Johnson in this in this game so far. I think it is. Johnson pumping, uh, spinning, a little pirouette, no look pass, deflected away by Dubois. And as I said, the pass rush, that really took him off his axis. Kenville is really affecting the game right now. I think he's affecting Quaid. I don't know if he's in Quaid's head per se, but he's definitely getting to him and making him uh, a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket. And it is a 12-6 lead. And for Iggy Valdez Manzanato, it is trying to tighten the screw here in this game here, up by two scores. And with about six and change in this first half, it has been all kiss but in-laws in this game. First attempt for Valdez Manzanato. Crosser, Browning, tackle by Valcor for about three, if not four yards. But if you look at uh, Poirier down the middle, that we have the Tyrell versus Poirier matchup, I think that's going to be one to look out, look yeah. out for as this game goes on. It could be intoxicating with those two big hitters going at it today in this those matchup. Are some, those here. are some serious players right there. Uh, potential stardust players in this game. Here. There are box office names here. James Tyrell is, is the right cornerback. Poirier will be lined up on him as he'll shadow his moves. Khalil clears the other corner, and that's going to be key. Can they come up with a turnover now? which can change the complexion of this game here for Dirty Birds. One stop for the Dirty Birds would definitely change the momentum of this game. Let's see what happens. Well, Valdez Manzano only had six INTs during the regular season. Going to the near side, Browning in stride. Kerr in the tackle, first down in the plus territory, and the right channel is open for that catch and run. I'm very impressed with Iggy's uh, play calling. 
uh, it's improved a lot. His reads and his throws have improved a lot. He is definitely getting towards becoming a possible Division One quarterback, in my opinion. Are you saying he's better than you? Uh, I didn't say that yet, but it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> you are the th- what, the third lead, all-time passing leader in uh, in yards. That's just because I'm old. And here's Mazzanello pumping and finding a well. He's dead to rights, and he's taken down by Valcour. Great tackle. Great tackle by Marquez Valcour there. He's someone to look out for on defense. He might make a play in this game. He might, he might make a game-changing play. Let's check out this tackle that he makes. One-yard gain on that play. The first jab didn't fool Valcour. No, no. Valcour not fooled. No, not at all on that play. It was no sucker punch run by Noel in that play. So with about 4.22 left in this first half, unofficially, 12-6 lead for Kiss My In-Laws over Dirty Birds from Brossard, Quebec at the CN Complex now. Yeah, I noticed on my way here, it's not called the Bell Complex no, anymore. It's not. So it's a CN I'm now a huge complex. fan of CN. Uh, I guess I'm going to try and take the train, and we'll take it from there. And now the caught by Kevell, who's been a runaway train Again, in this game. Again, Valcour with an amazing tackle. The guy is everywhere on the field on defense making flags. It's now third, and it looks like it's about seven. Can the Dirty Birds come up with a big stop here? And that is going to be key. Two more stops that would be required here, preventing the first down on the third down coming up for them. So this is a chance here to really set down the marker on defense for the Dirty Birds. They are missing some pieces of, on the offense, but again, this is a, a fully loaded defense here. Naz Dillon, we've not mentioned his aim yet. Could he get Iggy valdez Mazano off his line? Trips left for the in-laws. Going to the left. Browning in stride. First down to Moore, and he is taken down by Blackie. And this will be, oh, I beg your pardon, it will be short by uh, Jeff Roosevelt's finger. <laughs> Again, I'm very impressed with Iggy's play calling. This guy looks super smooth in the pocket right now. Um, looking at his reads, making the right reads. They're marching down the field pretty effortlessly right now as well. It's been an, an attacking armory of options he's gone with. He's used all the receiving targets so far in this drive, and including the first one as well. Yeah, we see Quaid just on the bench waiting to get back on the field, but the uh, in-laws, defense are, in-laws offense are doing a good job of uh, keeping him on the sidelines. So we have a challenge if that was a first down or not, and we'll have the replay booth as Leo Gervais will make his way up to the uh, – Luxury suites. There we go. And, uh, we'll Come and see us, Leo. Come and see us. And we'll see now what the call is, and we'll see how the replay is on this play. So they're going to challenge that. I, I thought it was a first down. So did I. But and, let's take a look. And we'll see how this is going to be. We've already had one challenge in, uh, on the Fall Cup in the okay. Tier 4 final, which was a changing moment in the game by the uh, INT. And now... It's more of a formality whether or not it's the first down or not here. So let's see the replay coming up here as they'll have that up for us on the screen. Yeah. And here we go. It's the yellow marker that is the first down. So that is caught. And I think Craig Brown was past it. It looked like he was past it. Yeah. Let's uh, see from this sideline angle here. This might give us a bit of uh, determination. And Brown has caught that. So this won't give us where the marker is officially. Hard to tell from that angle, but we'll see if there's an angle where Leo can have a look. And So the rule is you have to have ball and body past that certain point. And I thought he had it. I did as well. I did as well. It looks like he turns the corner right here. And is past it when he gets flagged. Yeah, it yeah. looks like that. Yeah, so like his his left foot is yeah. past it. His right foot is about to join the party uh, at the equal point of the space in the feet. The Marty party? The Marty party is not here today. No, but shout out to Marty Friedman. A uh, great player to play with. And shout out to uh, my boy Anto Brisbois, who is in the stands watching this Tier 2 Finals with the rest of us. I would not be here if I had to be anywhere else. I'll be in the warm weathers of somewhere nice. (laughs) Not in the the smooth, smooth uh, CN Complex Sportif in Brossard? No, you're calling what? I'm calling first down. I'm going to call it first down. I think it's first down or it's inconclusive. 
that's, that's how I see it, right? So let's see what Leo Gervais has as a call as he makes his, makes his way back onto the field. Yeah. And the call is. So first down. So this now changes the outlook on defense for Dirty Birds. They thought it was a fourth in inches. And now for Iggy valdez Manzanado, he has the luxury of the first down and to work the, 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 the width of the field very well. Yeah, looks like it's about first and goal from the five or six. So he has four downs to get this in the end zone. His whole playbook to use. Uh, probably feeling very comfortable if I'm Iggy right now. Well, they're oozing with intent right now. This has been an offensive enterprise so far with a 12-6 lead. And uh, we are approaching the end of this first half here from Brossard, Quebec. At this point, this could change the outlook of this game and the, the team talk at halftime for both these teams because it could be a one-score game or it could be a two-score game at halftime. That's it. And I'm wondering how many plays now are left till five. Four plays left. Is that four plays left I in the first half? I think plays. that's what we just yeah, got. So if I'm Iggy, I, I might be throwing the ball into the ground right now well, to not Jeff, give the ball. Last time you and I were in this booth, we had that happen in the Div 1 final, and yes. it cost Kevin Wyeth. And Benjamin will be in for the touchdown. In for the touchdown. So Vincent Benjamin in for the touchdown, and now this makes an 18-6 lead. Look at the replay here. It was close, but it appears he got both ball and body in. Yeah, Ooh, just an out route. Ooh. Let's see from this sideline here. The orange cone is the front. That was pretty close. Yeah, that was close. Pretty, pretty that damn was close. Very close. So, I mean, if you're if you are Quay Johnson, do you want to challenge that? Ooh. At this point, I don't know, but it looks like they're not. No. So this is a two-point like convert, 18-6 lead to perhaps go up by 14. Armand, second quarterback, middle, deflected by Dylan, and that saved themselves two points for the in-laws. And now we get Quay Johnson back out there. We were talking about his projection, his trajectory right now. He was glitching with a couple of the reads, pumping not multiple times. Does he trust his reads enough to make that throw on that first? I attempt? think with three plays left, he's really going to have to trust his reads here. You want to try to cut the field maybe in half on this play. Uh, look for James Tyrell or James O'Hayan to make a big play, but uh, I think it's crucial that the Dirty Birds uh, score with uh, three or four plays it's left. It's been a mesmerizing attack so far for the in-laws, and now Johnson needs to come back with an ace. Going deep, O'Hayan in stride. Tackle by Akhmal at the two-yard line, and right there he trusted his read. Huge play, great play call. Let's take a look. Just looks like a go route from O'Hayan and... Uh, Sanders didn't get over there quick enough. Great play by uh, the Dirty Birds. Effortless on that throw from Quay Johnson, trusting his instincts in that play, and now trying to get themselves back in this game down by a score 18-6 from Brossard. We think that there's two plays left, I two or three. There's two. two, I think two, two as two well. two plays yeah. left here. So, Look, you can't waste plays. You need to score. If you yes. score with one play left, that would be ideal. And here's Johnson looking to the right and repelled wow. by Dubois. And Great for play Blackie. by Dubois. Great play by Alexi Dubois. Came out of nowhere. Superman dive to bat that ball down. Um, and it seems like Blackie was the intended target. Yes, he was. Great and play. Dubois right there to push that ball away. So this will be up the last okay. play of the first half, and this can definitely change the semantics of this game if the Dirty score. Johnson, quick throw, and time, Khalil Clear does so, and now it's an 18-12 lead. That's a huge play for the Dirty Birds to get that score. 18-12, they're down by six. They can go for one or go for two. Uh, the playbook is open for them right now. And, and not only that, though, I believe second half ball goes to... I believe it goes to the Dirty Birds. Dirty Birds, I believe yeah. Dirty Birds yeah. opened up the game. Oh, no, they, I think in-laws started the game right. on offense, yeah. So they will have a chance, to, no matter what, if they, don't convert, if they convert or not, they will have a chance to come back on their opening drive the second half. That's correct. So Quay Johnson trying to make this uh, five-point lead. Pumping, far corner, and O'Han. Ooh, he was. Oh, he got in. Glitchy on that play there. So that will bring up. 
a game that is still in the balance right now. Yeah, 18-13, very tight game. Oh, five oh. plays. Okay, we so were completely we, wrong. <laughs> we are totally wrong in that <laughs> one over there. <laughs> we, were, we were misinterpreting the signs from Leo Gervais, but uh, that's okay. He said four plays. It definitely said that, yeah. Yeah, he did. So anyway, so we won't go to the, uh, the stools yet. Here, <laughs> no, not yet, stools not yet. yet. Oh, okay. that's it, though. Here is Valdez Manzanato firing a pass to Noel and tackle by James Tyrell. And four plays left. Okay, so now we're sure there are four plays left, four plays but this left. is a big momentum change because if the in-laws score, they go up by two scores, and that's uh, not where you want to be if the Dirty Birds. So let's see if they can come up with a big stop with four plays left. Now you talk about some of these uh, guys who picked off balls this year on this Dirty Birds roster. Again, you talk about Khalil Curry, who had three INTs. Justin Blackie had two INTs. Ohan had two INTs. Marcus Valcourt, no INTs during the regular season. Here is Valdez Mazzanato going deep down the near side. Poirier! This had the wrong angle of his body being torqued in that position. And he tried to go corkscrew in that play, and it'll be a third down play, third down, two plays left. That was a, would have been a tough catch, would have been an amazing catch. Uh, Iggy put the ball a little bit uh, off from where he wanted to be, but it could have been a spectacular play. But now uh, Dirty Birds defense, it's third and long for the Kiss My In-Laws. Power, no precision on that throw. And now this is a third and down with two plays left. Valdez Manzanato pumping, going left side. Oh! Almost picked up by Terrell. He ran the route wow. by Armand. And I would love to see the replay on that, <laughs> how that evolved. And here we are. Well, that looked like it could have been offensive pass interference on Sanders because Tyrell it looked like he was running the route. I'm and not I'll sure say what. this. Yeah. If he picked him off, Iggy Valdez Manzanato would have been a tourist watching James Harrell run down the sideline. 100%. And with that, they are going to challenge it. Yeah, that looked to me like there was some offensive pass interference there, but I don't know if... Uh, so Quay Johnson is getting an explanation from Leo Gervais on what the situation has evolved. And from the looks of it here, Jeff, they are not going to challenge it, so... I mean, I wouldn't challenge it right now because no, I wouldn't either. You, you got the the incompletion at minimum. So one play left. So oh, it looks like they're punting. So the in-laws. It looks like they're punting to give the Dirty Birds one play. So one play left here. So Quay Johnson has one play left to make a chance here. Can he come up? with an epic ending to this first half here to bring back what would be a one-point lead if they convert on this Hail Mary coming up. And as you might have expected, watch out for James Tyrell right now. He, the man... The second quarterback, though. I would drop one guy. I'm thinking that I'm dropping maybe uh, James O'Hayan or Justin Blackie because both of them can throw the ball the length of the field. But look for James Tyrell to come out of nowhere and jump through the ceiling and make an unbelievable play. To add a little bit of shimmy to this scoreline. They're down by five. Quay Johnson is about two, make it three yards deep in his end zone. And they got four deep. They're going to have a double rush, it appears. Early movement. They'll get a couple steps to work with. Going, last roll of the action. Touchdown! Tyrell! We said it. We said it. That is James Tyrell doing James Tyrell things. The guy jumps through the ceiling, makes an unbelievable play. I've seen it before, and we will see it again. And if you look at that play, he got pushed before he went up to catch the ball once we see the replay, because I was watching him the whole way. He got pushed and still made the play. Let's watch. Let's watch. He gets pushed and then gets up and catches the ball. Artistic gravity at his finest. The... Arts and crafts was on display in that play, using the dark arts of football. Quay Johnson coming up with a massive play on the last action. Now they are up by a score of 19-18. And we were thinking they would be down by two scores, and now they're up by a single point. Johnson back end zone. Blackie! Oh, hey in. I beg your pardon. In for the conversion. 
And now a 2018 lead, and look at the replay coming up from James O'Han. The Dirty Birds are flying right now. And this right there. And we won't get the clear cut, so with that. Okay, so we were thinking it was over after the first half with them being done here, but that Hail Mary has changed the direction of the ship in the open seas of this final. Yeah, what a throw by Quaid. What a catch by James. Nothing new. Seen it before. These are serious athletes making serious plays. Uh, it's going to be a great second half, I think. Was that that last play, was that a, a miss opportunity for the in-laws to have the proper sequence on? Because he went double rush. So they missed out on one more player back in the end zone, and they got exposed on, on the double count by James O'Han. I think by, uh, by, by James Darrell. I think they did. I think Sanders, I thought he was in good position. He was in the center of the field, middle of the end zone. But it looks like the ball just got by his uh, fingertips and uh, landing into the into the waiting uh, hands of James Tyrell. Yeah, Quay Johnson was referring to like that double snap count completely changed the look. Now, second half here, momentum is in Dirty Bird's side. We would agree with that. Correct? Yes. Yes. So, what do the in-laws have to do now to regain that momentum in the tail of the tape going towards the second half? So, if I'm Iggy, I'm in the huddle right now, saying, "Guys, we're down by two points. That's nothing." Let's keep doing what we do on offense. We got a stop on defense in the first half. Let's get one more stop on defense. Get me the ball on offense. I'm going to score every time I have the ball, and we're going to win this game. That's what I'm saying if I'm Iggy in the huddle right now. And the thing about this year for Quay Johnson, he, he was glitching the first 10 minutes. He wasn't comfortable. We saw that. Luca Kenville really got to him. So is that the matchup we're looking at in the second half, that Luca Kenville rushing Quay Johnson differently might change the approach? Yeah, I mean – Kenville versus Johnson is definitely something to look out for in the second half when the Dirty Birds are on offense. He certainly impacted the game. Uh, look for him to make a few big plays. And uh, also impressed with the play of Alexi Dubois on defense, making a few serious PDs that, uh, that are causing issues for the Dirty Birds. Do we see another turnover in this game? We might. My prediction at the beginning of the game was one turnover was going to be what, what would cost that team the game, and it's the Dirty Birds that have the turnover, but they do have the lead after that Hail Mary. So uh, we'll see what happens in the second half. Well, they always say when you draw, you can take it in different directions right now, and this drawing has taken us in a different direction from where we were the first time around in this game here. So now we get ready for the second half here. Jeff Roosevelt, Mo Khan on this Saturday night. And it will be the Dirty Birds on offense here going forward. It has been an absolute lovely game with these two teams. And we'll see now what the second half has in store for us going in towards the final 22 plus five plays. They've shown quality, and now we'll see if the Regal element comes into play. Oh, no. And oh, my. Picked off and that's by a Dubois. pick from Quaid. Like we just said, Alexi Dubois was making some big plays on defense. Not surprised to see him make another big play. And the momentum, just like that, has turned towards the in-laws. And again, you talk about that glitch from Quay Johnson on that first read. He went wide side. They set the trap, and he got caught. They did set the trap. Blackie was right, wide open in the slot. He decided to force it a little bit to Tyrell. And Dubois with the, uh, with the great pick. And uh, in-laws have the momentum right back. A heart-and-mouth moment for the Dirty Birds on offense. And here is... Valdez Mads now trying to punish them. Browning and O'Han in the tackle of Alcor. And they have a first down at the two and a half yard line. And in a blink of an eye, we were talking about one turnover, and it happened early in the uh, in the reading of the palms of this football game. Like you said, in the blink of an eye, just takes one play to completely change the momentum of this game. But uh, let's see how the Dirty Birds responds, and let's see if the in laws can uh, punch it in right now. First and goal, and this is where Vincent Benjamin has been the safety blanket for Iggy Valdez Manzano. Look at Canville, we've not mentioned yet, Mike coming on the slant here, and he's got some hands out here. We'll see who the call is. Poirier, the motion man to the right. And now we have a bunch to the extreme right. Valdez Manzano pumping back end zone, and Vincent Benjamin in for the touchdown. Do you want to challenge it because you saw Terrell's reaction? Here's a replay. All of these plays are so close to the back end zone. 
but it's as if Benjamin has a real sense of where he is on the field. I think he got both feet in yeah. again by an inch at most. This that, guy really knows where he is on the field. Those are size 13s. He's out. He's out of bounds. Lucky he wears 12 and a half. He, or 12 and three quarters. That's it. 24-20 lead. Four-point lead. They are going to go for the two-point convert. And that is what you call a, a, a ruthless clinical finish for Iggy Valdez Mazzano in the office. Trips left. Going to the back of the end zone. Poirier. And oh. the two Concordia players, the former and now the present, going at it. And that time, the former came up with the stop. Yeah, nice play by Tyrell on defense. But let's look for uh, Poirier to make some uh, big plays in the second half on offense, on defense. Kid's a real athlete. And uh, let's see what he can do uh, in this ball game. Well, that first pass from Quay Johnson in the second half was not silky smooth. And it got picked up by Dubois, who was absolutely in the right spot, right time to make that play. Base formation. Here is Johnson going to the left side. Caught by Khalil Kerr and tackled by Pru. Pru gets... By one, Dubois in on the tackle plus flag and penalty. So they'll add on a few more yards to the total. That was certainly holding on the in laws. Uh, we're going to tack on five yards to that. And I would be feeding the ball to Khalil if I was Quaid right now. The guy's uncoverable. You throw him a two yard hook, he's going to take it 10 yards with his uh, shifty moves. Well, it's been very effervescent right now with this offense with Khalil Kirk Ashton. And, and again, there's no Keanu Johnson today. But Khalil Clare brings that, a different dynamism to the offense with his ability to have the yards after catch in his favor. He certainly does, but we love Kiana and hope she's enjoying her party. Party. And here is Khalil Clare bringing the action to the party. Dubois in on the tackle on that play. And this will bring up a second down in about eight. Yeah, unfortunately, Kiana couldn't miss an event she had. But uh, we wish her the best and... Uh, Hopefully her brother and her husband can take care of business for her while she's gone. Well, if they do lose this game, they can say, hey, if Keanu Johnson was in the lineup, they would have won. 100%. Here is Quay Johnson. Again, pumping, and that is wide left, intended for Justin Blackie. But again, you talk about it from the quarterback viewpoint, he's pumping, glitching, and you see from the replay right here. Yeah, it looks like his first read was in there. His second read was in there. Uh, this rusher is, uh, Ken Vale is causing a lot of issues. And I think the uh, dynamic Kiss My In-Laws defense, who seem to be jumping around a lot, jumping routes, are uh, doing the right things right They're now. They're guessing right. They are. And right now, Quay Johnson has lacked the end product on some of these throws as he got burnt on that pick by Dubois in the first drive of the second half. It's a 24-20 lead for the In-Laws. Here's Johnson throwing one. Oh. And that too much zip on that pass tended for for uh, James O'Hayan, and this will bring up a fourth down for the Dirty Birds. And this is the truth or consequence moment here for the Dirty Birds. This is obviously a massive play in the game. Uh, who will Quaid go to on this uh, key fourth and eight? Are we looking at the right side with Blackie and Tyrell or the uh, left side with uh, Kyle, Tyrell, and James O'Hayan? Uh, where do we think he's going to look? Well, he'll need an outlet somewhere. And the, the role match he's had, Quay Johnson with James Sorrell in the football field, is second to none. And this could be the moment here of the first down required. Here is Johnson going deep, blocking the intended target. And that was sent towards Tashrow Boulevard. And another turnover at this time in favor of the in-laws. And now they have a chance to go by two scores, up by four. Obviously a nightmare start to the second half for the Dirty Birds. Uh, they're going to certainly have to get a stop to get back in this game. Let's uh, let's see what they can do. And how do you approach it for Iggy Valdez Mazzano? He's known for uh, taking his time on offense, almost like 10-minute drives here. Do you want to go with that approach or really put the squeeze on the clock? It's unofficial. We have about 16 and change left in this first half. I mean, that is, that is certainly not a bad idea. Uh, they have the hammer right now, so if he can take some time off the clock and score, uh, he's doing his job. And here he is looking for the crosser, Browning. And Valcor in on the tackle for a couple yards in the play as they're now inside the uh, Dirty Birds territory. Everything working right now for the in-laws. Uh, let's see if they can keep it going. And with that, we have less than 16 to go in this second half. Jeff Rosebott, Mo Khan. It's been an absolute show of offensive prowess by both teams here. However, the Dirty Birds have uh, been stuck in park a big flat on their tire, 
And if they do score here, it's a two-score lead with about who knows how much time left at that point. Pumping near side. Poirier, acrobatic and emphatic flag on the play. And this is a touchdown for the in-laws. I want to take a look at this replay. Did he run a stop and go on Tyrell? Let's take a look. Yeah, he's on the uh, right of the screen. He ran a stop and go. Beautiful stop and go from Poirier. Uh, Tyrell bit and Poirier, Poirier scored. Uh, just a tremendous play by uh, the in-laws. Poirier has been a principal supplier of touchdowns, and the range of passing from Iggy Valdez Mazzano has been absolutely sumptuous today. And now we have a 30-20 to 20 lead, a 10-point score, going for two. And about 10 minutes ago, it was a one-point lead for the Dirty Birds, and now they're chasing this game in red ink down by 10. Yeah, if I'm the Birds right now, I'm thinking we got to score and then possibly go right for an onside kick to get back in this game. But let's see how this two-point convert goes. And now it's down the rusher. Second quarterback dropping. Ahmad taking off. And here is Valdez Mazzano. Noel has plenty of time. There's three quarterbacks making the throw, and Vincent Benjamin cannot come up with the play. Clear on the coverage, and back on offense of the Dirty Birds. And for Quay Johnson, he's going to have to really push the envelope now. Uh, there's there's 13 minutes left, so if I'm Quay, I'm just I'm just making sure I score a touchdown here, and then probably going for an onside kick, or he could maybe save it to later in the game. But obviously, a touchdown right now is essential for the Birds. And if they don't come up now. They'll come up now, less than 13 to go in this ball game. It could be ball game now. Johnson, quick throw, and the one hopper to James O'Hain ends up being in the dirt close enough to Julian Pou then Oyen. He had Kyle Tyrell wide open on a go route. Unfortunately, he missed him, but uh, the in laws' defense is certainly causing, uh, causing a few issues right now for, uh, for Quay Johnson and the Dirty Birds offense. He's not gone to Kyle Tyrell at all in this game. He's been pretty much MIA. It's almost been. James Terrell and Khalil Kerr and James O'Hayan so far with a sprinkle of Justin Blackie. And here's Quay Johnson. James Terrell on the turn. Dubois in on the tackle. And this will bring up a third down at about three and a half. Now make it four officially. Another great tackle by Dubois. One of the most underrated defensive players in all of FPF. This guy is a high division player on defense. Has a good sense for the ball. And uh, a great deflagger as well. And this will be a third and four. What is in the Rolodex for Johnson? Quick fire, and that might have been intended for either Blackie or Kerr. We'll see in the replay, but uh, both players look like tourists in that play. I think it was for Khalil, but like we said, he's not the regular snapper for this team, so maybe the, uh, the chemistry and the connection isn't quite where it needs to be. But uh, nevertheless, there's a huge fourth down uh, right now for the Birds. Uh, they, they certainly need to convert. So fourth down, this could be the ball game here. Johnson pumping short through the hands Ooh. of Blackie. And they come up empty on this drive. Yeah, the, the Dirty Birds offense uh, not looking as sharp as it has been all season. I don't know if it's championship jitters, but uh, nevertheless, you've got to give a lot of props to the in-laws defense, which is causing uh, some serious problems for the Birds offense right, right now. Right now, the CN complex lights are shining on the in-laws and exposing the Dirty Birds in the second half. And they have not been able to come up with the solutions to this problem of being down by 10 here from the Tier 2 Finals. I want to give a shout-out to the Rising Star and my boy James Drysdale watching at home right now. Uh, he's got a lot of, lot of buddies on both sides of the team rooting for a good game. So let's see how this game ends. Never heard of him. Never heard of Drysdale. Oh, you will. Never you heard will. of Anthony Drysdale. <laughs> now here is... Iggy Valdez Mazano right to Vincent Benjamin, who we've heard of before, as he put on the starburst and in for the touchdown. This is turning into a clinic from the in laws' uh, offense. I don't think they've got stopped all game. Uh, Iggy Magnets doing his thing, looking super cool, calm, and collected. Um, this guy's going places in FPF. It's been absolutely ruthless and clinical in terms of how this has been so far, and right now it's a 36 20 lead. For the in-laws, they've shown their quality. They've been silky smooth. And a chance here to go up by 18. It was a one-point lead, and now we're perhaps looking at two-score lead, maybe three-score lead. Vincent Benjamin has been an absolute beast on offense. And here he is, the beast 
from the east, making up the two-point convert, and now it's an 18-point lead. Yep, 18-point lead. Vincent Benjamin just ran a, a hook at the back of the end zone, and it uh, looked like Marquez uh, didn't quite read it. And an amazing toe tap. Again, this guy seems to know where he is on the field at all times. It's uh, impressive to watch. And it is now... It is now really a situation where there is no point of return for the Dirty Birds to get some points, and there, here they go. And here is Kyle Terrell, the intended target, his first target of the day. Uh, during the regular season, he had 19 targets, was 8 of 19 during the regular season. Yeah, go route for, for Kyle. Sanders was there. Uh, Pru was there. Uh, Quaid did everything he could to fit that ball in, but uh, that wasn't open from the start. So they have to become inventive with these throws. And right now, if you are the in-laws, you're just coasting along here, uh, soaking in the pressure for whatever comes from the Dirty Birds. And Quaid Johnson trying to apply pressure. Pumping, throwing, that's a dead ball. There's a flag in the play, Benjamin in on the INT, but Canville will be called for roughing the passer or contact the passer. Yeah, contact on the passer. Quaid got hit as he threw it. Let's take a look at the replay. Uh, to be honest, the uh, the Roger Canville didn't <laughs> didn't even really need to do that, but a no. uh, little bit of a bailout call. But uh, the birds uh, still have life. They have to they got to score quick and go for an onside they kick. They need to uh, pick the lock of the uh, in laws defense, which yeah. they've not done yet in the second half. Yeah, the key port the key port lock. That is, they need, they'll need a couple of those keys. They need a few key port locks. Uh, we'll try and hook that up for them, but uh, nevertheless, nice play from Quay to Khalil, and they need to get in the end zone pronto. Well, it's been um, – they've been locked in pretty much in the second half. Yeah. They've been locked out. They have been locked out. They've been locked, they've been out, locked out of the out. club. And right now, this club is a bot snap, low roller, and here comes Johnson. He avoids the dead to rights move, and he will get around Dubois. And what was almost a, a crisis moment ends up being a, a rose moment here for Quade Johnson to get close enough to the first down. Yeah, let's not forget, Quade is one of the best receivers in all of FPF, so he can move, he can shake those hips, he's got good routes, he's faster than he seems, and uh, let's see what the birds can do now. Well, it is the first down officially, so it'll be first and 10. They can still get a first down from the 11-yard line, and if they do score, they have to go for the onside, I would imagine. Absolutely. Uh, they're down by 18 points, so that's three possessions. They basically need to score, onside kick, score, get a stop, and score. That's a I'm lot. not saying it's impossible. The menu is quite deep for the options. And here is O'Hayan, oh, and that. he hip-check Dubois into the uh, end zone. Yeah, No that, final play. This <laughs> that will be second that down potentially down. could have been uh, uh, OPI there as uh, O'Hayan backed into him with his uh, – with his big and body, let's right take here. a look. Yeah, that's not really allowed, but in any case, uh, they're going to let that one slide. Uh, you're down by three scores. Yeah, it is what it is. You're down by three scores. And we have uh, unofficially about less than seven to go, so they really have to really get going with this offensive attack. They're down by 18, and here is Johnson. Patience through the hands Ooh. intended for Blackie. And this will bring up a third down. Looks like he just led Justin a little bit too much, a little bit of miscommunication there. But uh, I have to say, I can't believe how little I've called Sanders Armand's name in this game with the in-laws being up by 18. I am really shocked at that. That's what we was, call a luxury. Yeah, 100%. I thought he was going to be a huge factor in this game, and I don't even remember calling his name possibly more than once. Well, which He's is, probably giving a day off today on the Saturday evening over here, you know? That's, that's what it is. He deserves it. He's a player. Johnson going to the right, deflected by Sanders Armand. And there we go. And the announcers, there it wasn't really the announcers' jinx. It was more the announcers' premonition. Calling him out. As Sanders come, comes in and makes a huge play on defense. The forensic touch by Sanders Armand. And this brings up a fourth down and the ball game now at this point. This is definitely ball game if they don't score. Uh, let's see what Quaid has in his bag of tricks. Oh, and the second receiver to the left. James Sorrell, the wide out to the right of the formation. They need six. Pressure back end zone, and that might put an end to any hopes for the Dirty Birds to come back in this game. 
I could not be more impressed with the Kiss My In-Laws defense. Uh, this Dirty Birds offense has a ton of Division One players, and the Kiss My In-Laws defense has really showed up in this game. They have indeed, and uh, they've held a shutout in the second half. Yes, that is correct, it which is, is uh, something that's very difficult to do as we know in flag. They are on a 19-0 run in the second half, 19 without reply. So That is correct. So this is now a situation, if the laws do score here, is all but a wrap. That is correct. Let's see what Iggy has in his bag of tricks. And here is Valdez Mazzanato and called by Julien Pru. I think now it's less about the scoring touchdown, but now controlling the clock and really squeezing whatever's left in this matchup. Yeah, the truth is with four minutes left, Iggy doesn't even need a touchdown. He could get a few first downs by taking each drive to third or fourth down and just uh, kill the clock and win this game. Um, a really great performance by the Kiss My In-Laws uh, complete team, offense and defense. Yeah, there's, there was a lot to be desired from the Dirty Birds, even the first half. We you think about that Hail Mary, you take away the Hail Mary score, they're, they're down by a bigger line of 38 to 14 at that point. Yep. And here's Browning, and that'll be enough for a first down. And this is where Iggy valdez Mazo is a technician when it comes to really squeezing clock. He doesn't want these guys to score right away. He'd rather kill off more seconds and get the touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about this team, about – uh, Iggy's, um, Iggy's leadership and specifically their defense in this game was, even though their offense I don't believe has been stopped, but uh, I'm really impressed by their defense. I've seen Iggy do this before. Like I said, he's on the verge of becoming a Division One quarterback. So uh, this is not surprising at all to me. And right now, the clock is now the ally of the in-laws. Trips left. Valdez Mazzanato, time going for the kill shot. Browning, game, wow. set, match, in-laws. What a catch by Browning. That was an unbelievable catch. Head topping Justin Blackie. Let's see the route here. Is that just a go route? That was is just a go. Uh, That's just a go. Are going to challenge it, though? One. Oh, he's in. He's yeah, in. he had like he's at least three, three steps in there. He had plenty of runway on that. Yeah, that was just a go route from Browning. Again, couldn't be more impressed with this team. They uh, put on a clinic here, 44-20. to 20. So there was contact on the pass here, so they'll play on the next possession, so the birds will have it at their own one. But at this point right now, it is pretty much a formality. It's pretty much a formality. Uh, great season for the birds. Uh, they had a great record. I know they're coming back uh, in the winter. Uh, because uh, Quaid is taking a bunch of my players, which I'm not happy about. Just kidding, Quaid. But uh, I want to shout out all of my teammates. You all know who you are. Big things coming in winter for our two teams. You haven't seen you all year, eh, by the way? You haven't seen? I've seen you all year. I know. Yes. I know. I, uh, I didn't have as much uh, flag time as I would have liked this year as I normally do, but I'll be back. Looks like in-laws are doing the kill the, kill the clock play. Yep. And uh, it's like the three on three tournament for this uh, charity yeah. event. And oh, my. that looked like a NFL tackle from Naz Dillon on Poirier. Yeah. Uh, Poirier is down after being annihilated uh, by Naz Dillon, not mm -hmm. on purpose. Let's see the replay. He's going for the flag and destroys him. But I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, uh, it's safe to say he's going to be okay, thankfully, because he yeah. does have uh, a Concordia football career. Correct. So now, one of the advantages of doing this broadcast is I get to shout out anyone that I want. Yes, you do. Uh, I'm going to think of a few people to shout out. Uh, I'd like what to shout out, my, I'm gonna shout out my boy Adam Rockman, who had a kid, uh, I oh, think, yes. about a month ago. Right, right, so, uh, right, right. Mazel Tov to Adam is he, Rockman. Is he coming back in January? He's not playing in the winter, but he might come sub a little bit uh, for our Division Two team. But uh, shout-out to Adam it. Rockman. And, yes, that is it. Kiss my in-laws, 44 to 20. And uh, quite the uh, show by the in-laws and how this played out for them. And they are your Tier 2 champion winners. And, uh, look, the turning point was that INT on the first drive of the second half, picked up by Alexi Dubois, and they never looked back. Yeah, it was one of the first throws, if not the first throw of the second half. 
And as you said, the in-laws never look back. It was a dominating performance uh, from the in-laws offense and defense. And right now we'll see the trophy presentation here before we come back into the booth here with Jeff Roseblatt and Mo Khan on this Saturday evening. And uh, for uh, Quade Johnson, they had momentum coming in, but uh, this is uh, going to be a, a long four weeks before they get back to the campaign in early 2024. You know, Quaid uh, hasn't played that much quarterback uh, in flag. I think he's just going to be getting better. He's extremely talented, so I think there's only things to look forward to for him moving forward. No question about that. And now we'll have Rocket Pat present the trophy to uh, Iggy Valdez Manzanato. And he'll pass that around. Now they'll give off the banner, and that'll be it there for sure. So we, we thought we were going to have an epic game. And then there being no five plays, no time. There was actually about two minutes left, and they 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 had the white flag thrown in that situation right there. I mean, it was an epic first half, ending with that Hail Mary and making it a one-possession game. And uh, congrats to Iggy for winning the MVP. Surprise. Well-deserved. Shocker. But uh, it was a great first half, and then the game just got away from the birds in the second half. The in-laws uh, jumped pounced on their uh, opportunities and ended up being a blowout but uh, kudos to the in-laws they deserve it uh, oh look yeah, who we have we, we have, have superstar Pat Jerome, Pat Jerome. Hall of Famer all-star representing his sub-zero team but never um, heard of Pat Jerome before in my life props to Pat Jerome legend of the league never heard of Pat Jerome in my life <laughs> and props to the in-laws for a dominating performance and a tier two championship no question about that and, and as we're back in the booth now, Jeff, uh, you mentioned Dirty Birds moving up. This in-laws team, if they kept this core group, what do you see them playing next season? I think, I think that's a strong Division II team. I really do. Iggy might say he belongs in Division Three because he's not there yet. I don't believe it. Probably 4B. <laughs> Maybe. But honestly, he's developed at a, at a very fast pace. Uh, Vincent Benjamin is, is a stud. Poirier is a stud. Dubois on defense. I like the team a lot. I think they could play in Division Two. Unfortunately, they wouldn't have Sanders because he's playing with me. But uh, <laughs> I think this team is 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 high is is high Division Three, uh, mid Division Two level. That's where I would put them. Well, a lot of questions to look at. We'll find out in about five weeks from now. But this was a game that was won in the second half. Dubois INT changed it, and they never looked back. They never looked back. Great performance on offense. Great performance on defense. It was the complete package this game and. Uh, Props to the in-laws. That's, that's all we got to say about this game. Jeff, good job by you as always. Congrats on the T2 victory for Kiss My In-laws. We'll see you in Winter 2024. Happy holidays, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Great job, Jeff. Seamless as always, bro. Yes, yes. With doing it with you is like... Thank you.